Number one, I love you. I love you. That's what you want to hear, isn't it? Number two, you are all going to heaven. And you say, how do you know this? It's very simple. God had been in your heart a long time. He's been dormant, some of you. Some of you, much more alive. But continually, God is asking for more conversion. Why do you believe? Let me tell you, a man can be a soldier in the military for 20 years and never see one day of combat. But when he's in that foxhole and he's losing his own men, he's on a whole nother level. God is preparing you now for this level. I will tell you how I know that God loves you this much and how I know that you're all going to heaven. Some of you have had abortions. Some men here and women are adulterers. Some have committed murder. Some of you didn't have the abortion, but you paid for it, so you have contributed to this. Many people are a part of this great sin in this country. Over 50 million in the United States alone. 45 million die every year in the world. These are all God's children, and God brings them home. Now he wants to bring you home, now, in this moment. This is a chance for heaven right now. You don't have to wait to die to experience heaven. But when you committed the sin, any of the Ten Commandments, or the sin of abortion, or contributed to it, let me be very clear. Did you go to one of your friends and ask your friend, hear my story, and you say, yes, I went to one person. I said, why do you go to this person to confide in this sin to them? Because they didn't judge me, because they loved me, because I felt mercy and grace. Now, I ask you this. Do you think that your God doesn't have more mercy than your friend? Do you think your friend has more grace than God? Does your friend have more love than the Creator? It can never be. It can never be. So, God forgives you. And now He needs you to begin again. To accept forgiveness. Earlier I said, God never sends a man into hell. People choose this place. Your choice. God made you and loves you. There's never been another like you. He deemed that you would come here. He asked you and you came. Today, you came. You had the courage to come. And there was plenty parts of the world that pulled you from today from even coming, but you came. Don't you know how much God will remember this? Do you think he is a, a God that's just sitting there waiting to toss you off? You are perfect. There is no one else like you. And without you, he would cry. So he's coming to you now, right now, in this moment. All he has to hear from you is yes. Yes, you've accepted Jesus, some of you. Keep accepting him. Every time we sin, we deny him. Be holy. Be perfect just as my father is perfect. Or in the passion. Ha'ozina otiabui. Kuma bezrafi. Shamereni meresha te share tamenu alai. Bakakasaya nafshi adenai. Bakakasiti. Bakab takti. Ba kulitakeho henkehel kosi de mini. Hokin lock is far. Lehewe di lock is far. Milafil komare he ma haki hida. He the hibu denale dena, kokaver dia na a heve lakom and tun. He the hibu lakom. My commandment to you is this you love one another just as I have loved you. And if that doesn't grab you, maybe this one will. Your name may not appear down here in this world's hall of fame, 
In fact, you may be so unknown that no one knows your name. The Oscars and the praise of men may never come your way, but don't forget God has rewards that he'll hand out someday. This crowd on earth, they will soon forget when you're not at the top. They will cheer like mad until you fall, and then their praise will stop. Not God, he never does forget, and in his hall of fame, by just believing on his son, forever there's your name. I tell you, friend, I wouldn't trade my name, however small. It's written there beyond the stars in that celestial hall. For all the famous names on earth, or the glory that they share, I'd rather be an unknown here and have my name up there. God bless you. Fantastic.